Hey Summers! Hi everyone! Welcome to Make 2 and another Sims 4 house tour! This is one that I'm pretty excited to show because it's the biggest thing I've made in the game so far. It's actually based off of a real-life house design. This is called the Sears Magnolia House, and the history behind this house is that the company Sears in the early 1900s decided to offer house kits, which means like pre-designed houses, so you could like look in a mail order catalog literally and order a house based on designs in that catalog, and then they would like ship you all the parts and you just had to contract your own builders to build it for you on your own house lot wherever in America with the parts that were provided by Sears. And apparently now there are only seven of these Magnolia styles currently existing in the US or there are only seven documented. There are a lot that look like it, but there's like very particular ways of determining whether it really is a real life Sears Magnolia house. Obviously mine is not. <laughs> there are some changes in my design just to make it work for Sims 4 and also because some things I just liked a little bit better, but I have to, you know, give a nod to the fact that this is very much based on that design. So I think it's really cool, but I don't know why, but being able to order your house through mail order catalogue makes me sad. Why? I don't know. <laughs> could you if I could get a house this big and magnificent through a mail order catalogue, I would do it. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, the house is here uh, on the first floor, and hopefully we have learned a little bit about camera controls since our first video. But anyway, the front yard obviously is here. There are some paths snaking off of the front path, and then there is this massive porch here. I went for a brick because I felt like that was more of a kind of traditional historical type of style and you'll see throughout the house itself a lot of the furnishings are very traditional and there aren't a lot of modern touches for electronics and things like that. So let's go ahead and check out this side. This is the formal-ish living room so a lot of the colors in here are kind of blue and gray just kind of going with that color scheme. Let's see if we can stick the walls up just quickly. And yes, <laughs> so this is kind of what it'll look like from the Sims Eye mm. view. That does look really nice, <laughs> really grand, and I love the colors. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, what are the walls just white? The walls look like they're very similar colors. To the you know furniture. what? I There's mean, like an off-white kind of. So, sort of my kind of perpetual gripe with Sims 4 at the moment right now is, well, perpetual at the moment, is that the color scheme, like, doesn't often appear what it looks like in the swatches. And so I might pick something and then see it in the actual room view and be like, that's not really what I thought it was going to be. Um, and I think some of that is to do with the lighting in the game also. Like, it's all very dark and blue tinted. And, you know, I'm sure I'm not the only one who has these gripes about the game, but anyway. Off of the living room is a small nook with a fireplace and just a couple of chairs and a bookcase for reading. So it's a little bit more private, but still open to <laughs> the actual living room. Does the main living room has it have its own fireplace, did I see? No. That's the fireplace for the room. Yeah, basically. So you might have noticed in the living room there are these double doors, and those walk into this sunroom. Oh, wow. Yeah. So... And immediately it feels, I mean, not just the windows, but the, I like the color scheme. It feels much brighter in an area. Indeed, yeah. So I went for, yeah, green and white-ish over here. And that looks out, has these kind of wall-to-wall, side-by-side windows on all three sides to kind of give that impression of a sunroom. Then across the hall here is the formal dining room. And again, let me just quickly experiment with putting the walls up. Yeah. So this again is blue and grayish style, but paler. So yeah, that's kind of what and it really looks like. high ceilings as well. Oh, look at the curtains. Yeah. High yeah. ceilings throughout the downstairs because again, it's a grand old mansion and I just decided to, you know, do my best with that. Uh, yeah. I love this thing <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> so off of the dining room, again, there are these double doors and if you walk out through there, you will see that they let out onto this small patio, which has mm. steps down 
on either side into both the front and backyard. Yeah. I think that's a cool design. I know it's the original Sears uh, house, Mm -hmm. but having that kind of mirrored balcony slash, well, sorry, sunroom slash patio. Yeah, the symmetry is really nice, yeah. Symmetry, but not quite fully symmetrical. So then off of that dining room, by the way, is a small pantry, which has a through way into the kitchen, which we're going to see right now. Going past the staircase to the upstairs, here is the kitchen. I decided to go for some warmer colors, so pink and lavender, purple, taupe, that kind of thing. And the old-fashioned icebox refrigerator. Yeah. First touch of modernity is a microwave here. Then off of this side is a breakfast nook. That's pretty nice. Sorry, just... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and they've got a dishwasher as well. Yes. I like the cabinets too, which also feel mm-hmm. kind of not completely up period, but yeah, definitely a bit more yeah. old fashioned. Oh, look at those wall units are really high up. Yeah. It's hard to sit there. I guess they were cut out of shop before. It is hard to scale that kind of thing. I think, you know, once we move Sims in here, or we might try to move Sims in here, we're going to test the house a bit and see what's successful and what's not. And um, I think once we get that done, I definitely want to upload the house to the gallery. Our username, Make2TV, it's in the video description below. So if you want to give us a follow and check out, you know, the houses that we have, that would be great. And then off the back of the hall here is a small powder room for guests. Uh Next to that is a laundry room. (laughs) Underneath the stairs, actually, there is a door. (laughs) to a small space underneath the stairs for storage. And then through here is a more informal spot for the family to sit and watch TV. <laughs> so this is another... <laughs> so it's kind of back-to-back fireplaces here as well, which yeah. I think is probably pretty realistic. Yeah, I definitely tried to make that on purpose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And also give them a brick hearth, again, a nod to the historical structure of the house originally. So that's just painting the floor for those few squares yes. in brick, yeah. All right, so then wow. going up the stairs, <laughs> cool. the stairs let out into this upstairs hallway, and there are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, four and a half bedrooms, and I'll explain the half in a little bit, but first of all, going into this bedroom over here. Again, very formal style Why is that mirror hanging out in the middle of there? I think I was probably experimenting with that, sorry. Okay, again, a very formal style, but this one is more pink and white. So it's a girlyish kind of bedroom. Here's that shot of the wallpaper. I think that looks really cool. Yeah, what I liked here (laughs) is to have a couple of armchairs and a little table for flowers next to the window. Here's a desk, and this bedroom has a balcony out here (laughs) with table and chair and also a painting easel (laughs) and then over here is a dressing room for that bedroom and the original plans had that dressing room being uh, Uh. a a sort of access having sort of access to this Juliet balcony in the front here that's cool yeah that's a really nice setup (laughs) Mm, very princessy kind of bedroom yeah so the upstairs hallway has this bit of an offshoot here which has a couple of or a few doors into different parts the door immediately in front goes to the bathroom this door goes to a bedroom so we'll put the walls down so you can see that this bedroom is still traditional but decorated in kind of darker brownish and gray colors so Mm -hmm. a bit more masculine perhaps and then this is the bathroom which is shared for the upstairs went for a clawfoot tub because of course yeah so that's maybe the original clawfoot tub let's say let's say yeah and this here is just a bit of a linen closet oh right so, yeah i see then over here is another bedroom this is more <laughs> cheery so i went for yellow this, i like uh, that bedspread yeah i really kind love it picasso too. and start van gogh <laughs> <laughs> sunflowers not picasso yeah and i love that there is this extra bit to the room. So the room itself is a bit cramped, but I decided to use interesting structures for the layout in order to have more space for little things like this chair in the bay window area and 
this nook here for the desk. And this room has its own bathroom and mm -hmm. closet. Right. So then over here is the next bedroom. And this is accessible from this doorway off the hall here. And again, this bedroom is, I would huh. say, probably more unisex. It's kind of both gray and wood patterning, but the bedspread, I think, is a bit feminine. <laughs> and just some antique touches around. There's an antique camera. There is this chess table. And then through here, a set of double doors. Oh, uh, so yeah. So this is from the main room, the double doors there. Yeah. So, so this kind of room is what is called a sleeping porch, and it was popular back in the day, again, the early 1900s, and it's basically just a porch, or actually a, an enclosed balcony, really. And uh -huh. it's just a place for uh, a bed to uh... be kind of out in the open air, because during the summertime it gets really hot and you want some fresh air. And yes. so instead, you just sort of have to imagine that these windows are kind of open and screened and so that's why i put these blinds up on so top of them so it's basically just yeah mosquito netting exactly yeah and there might be like and a ceiling fan up here yeah. yeah so if it's hot you sleep out there exactly huh yeah that's very cool mm -hmm. and then over here is a closet for this bedroom and there's one more bit off the back here another juliet balcony as you can see uh, right. just to check out the, view. the back yeah yeah then there's a staircase up above to the attic, which I've got nothing in here right now, but it is just to have, you know, a space for this section of the roof to live. Cool. No, it's, it's definitely worth putting in the stairs to make it feel like, yeah, there's the proper attic yeah. where they could store things or ghosts could live. <laughs> so you've shown us the inside, I think, but there's tons going on outside from yes. what you've shown us. So right here... <laughs> yeah, I even really like the front <laughs> before we even get to the crazy maze, like all the pathways and little yeah. seats. But I guess we should concentrate on the maze because that looks amazing. Well, I was with all this stuff, the the bushes. I was also just trying to experiment with making things look properly manicured and landscaped. And mm. I even went for like the terrain paint under the flower beds and terrain paint for the pathways and stuff. Yeah, but I think yeah, that's cool. So basically, I had spent a long time, you know, doing all this stuff up here. Um, the bushes and the terrain paint and whatnot. And then I was like, oh, the backyard is looking really bare. What can I do? I don't want to do more crazy bushes and stuff like that. I'm really tired of that. And then I thought, a hedge maze, because that's the kind of thing that you'd see at a historical manner, you know. I agree. So it's kind of waist height, the hedges. Which I think is fine. Are they? Well, we haven't actually put a sim in here yet. Can I just say, I'm going to admit to this, even though it's going to make me look like an idiot and a noob again, but when I first started this hedge maze, I wanted, like, I completely forgot that you could do this. This is fencing. It's a type of hedge bush fencing that you can draw by hand or, you know, create a square or whatever shapes you want to, just like a room. But I forgot about that. And so I started doing a hedge maze out of these placing them individually and it just took me forever and then finally i was like wait a second there's a much easier way to do this oops so well, yeah i think it's good of you to admit <laughs> that and you know in two years time we can look back on what we're creating then in sims 4 yeah and compare it to today and i think what well, you did today is still really cool <laughs> yeah so this hedge maze i'm proud to say is my own design i just I should have probably planned it out ahead of time on like graph paper or something, but instead I just did it freehand. I just yeah. kind of started drawing once I finally figured out that I could draw. Um, I just started drawing with these hedges and I decided to try and have a space on the inside and a couple of nooks out here, you know, little surprises. And so yeah, it does work as a maze. I, well, I think, I hope so. <laughs> you know, if you just kind of went inside, you could eventually find yourself here or in one of the nooks. And yeah. there's a separate it's... exit from the nook, which goes out, you know, you can, again, find Oh, there's way. two exits. Yeah, exactly. So Two entrances, yeah. I think it's really nice. Like, it definitely, it looks great. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really cool having things in the corner. Like, the, I like the one yeah. down at the top with the seat. It's kind of like a, yeah. a secret uh, area you could go and meet your 
your date. Your paramour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for the outside of the hedge maze, I went for a slightly taller version, and then for the inside, a smaller one, just because I wanted there to be a bit of contrast to the outside and inside. But yeah. Yeah. So I, I think I it's know. really cool. <laughs> I think also it's. Um, I mean, this is an American style house, and I think mm-hmm. if you're buying a big fancy house like this, I also think you may well want to capture some of that. European style of gardening, the kind yes. of uh, hedge mazes of places like big palaces in England or wherever. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's really cool. They fit one in in the back. Mm. So yeah, that is the house. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this tour of it. Like I said, we're gonna try and put it on the gallery once we're done. You know, testing it and making sure things work okay. In the meantime, please let us know in the comments what you think. Feel free to subscribe to our channel if you're new because we've got plenty more Sims 4 videos on the way. Thanks for watching.